It's early May and the 1979-80 season is coming to an end. Liverpool have wrapped up their fourth league title in five years. So the big match focuses on the battle for promotion from the second division. All the drama brought to you as ever by Brian Moore. And welcome again to the big match on this last full weekend of the league season. A weekend where we know that Liverpool have triumphed in the battle for the first division championship but where the second division promotion race, even now, still has some way to run. And today we're going to concentrate on that second division situation, with contenders Chelsea against Oldham Athletic, that's our main match, with challengers Birmingham City facing Notts County in what turns out to be one of the most remarkable games of the season, and with Sunderland away to Cardiff City. But our start comes at Stamford Bridge, where a crowd of 27,000 had one eye on Chelsea's performance against Oldham and one ear on the promotion news from elsewhere. But where at the start of the afternoon, they prepared to say goodbye to a player who'd become, it seemed, almost a permanent part of the Chelsea scene. Ron Harris ends a 20-year career with Chelsea here at Stamford Bridge today. He's seen them win the Cup, he's seen them win in Europe, he's seen a few managers here as well, and he's had plenty of experience in the first division with Chelsea. And now Ron, Chopper Harris, hopes a win today will keep this Chelsea side in with a chance of promotion to the first division. They can only win here and wait to see what others do, of course. But for this game, at least, they have Mickey Joy back as substitute, although he's still not fully recovered from the after effects of chickenpox. Meanwhile, Oldham Athletic come with an unchanged side. They are seeking a double over Chelsea. Names, I must admit, not all that familiar down here, although, of course, the number five, Kenny Clements, and the number eight, Jed Keegan, both played for Manchester City. And the number four, Richard Kawinichi, is a Polish international whose first game for Oldham was the 1-0 victory over Chelsea in December. The referee today is Dennis Hedges of Oxford. So Chelsea get us away in that all dark strip of blue. Oldham today in tangerine shirts and white shorts. And Chelsea certainly asked for the full backing of a good crowd here today, and they've had that already. Full of enthusiasm, there's Jed Keegan and at least three or four of the Oldham front men caught offside and a free kick for Chelsea. Whose big problem is that they've won only one of their last six games and indeed they've scored only four times in those six matches. That's really what has put Chelsea in this difficult position as they come to the last game of the season when for so long it looked as though they might easily get themselves into the first division after a really dreadful start to the season. It's Heaton on the far side, an 18-year-old, back to Hooligan. And here's Chivers now for Chelsea. Britain's made a, a dash through the middle, but has got himself into an offside position, a free kick for Oldham. Chivers. Walker is OK. Not offside. Onto the left foot. Oh! Turn round there by McDonald. It's open to a good shooting position there, Clive Walker, and uh, the ground shot pushed round the post by Peter McDonald. So Chelsea's corner. Walker with it. Men have come up from the back. Floated on a difficult breeze here. Jim Steele's come back as well to help out. And an offside there. I think it might even be a free kick to Chelsea because, uh, yes, indeed, uh, one of the Oldham boots was very high there. And a free kick for Chelsea. Almost central, something like 23 yards out. Now Fillery, Walker, and Britain behind it. There's the Oldham wall. Now, what are they going to come up with? Indirect free kick. Referee with his arm above. And Fillery! And it's in there, a deflection, Chelsea in the lead, with five minutes gone. Mike Fillery. And that's brought a bit of joy and relief to Stamford Bridge. A little touch off there from that free kick. A hearty thump by Fillery, 
a deflection there off the Oldham defence and leaving poor Peter McDonald stranded. Chelsea won Oldham nil. And it'll be down to Mike Fillery in spite of that deflection. Chelsea chairman Brian Mears looking and wondering. Hayton has gone past Roaf. Played in here for Steele, a little touch by him for Komenichi. And there's a ball played on here for Atkinson, and it's stopped this time, and it's going to be in there. No, it's kicked off the line. Well, Mickey Nutton suddenly came to the rescue there for Chelsea. There was a lovely ball played by the pole of Komenichi, and it looked as though there was a chance on there, except that Barota's knee got in the way for Oldham. Cleared it for Chelsea, only as far... Or in the end, nothing to clear it off the line from Steele. That's a good run there by Walker, and Chivers picked him up well. So it'll come to nothing because here's Jed Keegan again. Stainrod being shoved in the back. Good decision by the referee that. Colin Pates, it was just the merest touch, but it was a little push. given by Atkinson to Philip. A little four for Tommy Lang. And there's a corner. And the crowd were looking to the referee to see if he would uh, point to the spot. But that didn't even enter his head. And he plunged to the ground. And the corner already taken. It's with Britain. Played wide again for Fillery. Slightly different angle there, but to no avail. Nutton offside. Free kick to Oldham. Quarter of an hour to half time. came in and it just was a little too high for Pates. Walker. On to the right foot and no problems there for the keeper. But certainly Walker and Langley getting a good understanding going. There's a fan talking to a linesman on the other side of the field there. Still pursuing that linesman down the line, but the game's going on with Walker onside. I wonder if he was put off by that uh, fan. And Walker's gone all the way through and has got number two. And the fan who was there with the linesman is now on the field. That wasn't the one. Must have been touch and go whether Walker was offside. The linesman obviously felt that he wasn't. And Walker went on, went round the keeper, and put it into the back of the net. Chelsea 2, Oldham 0. Mike Walker gets his 12th of the season. Kick. 
first time for that there. And Mickey Leach, his youth coach, with a big smile on his face, the former Queen's Park Rangers striker. And things going pretty well for Chelsea at the moment. But of course, it might just be too late. At the moment, it's Stainrod running over the ball. Kamenichi, a tremendous shot, and Verota. Grabbed that one somewhere under his chin. Well, the pole really let one go there. Verota knew all about it. Now Walker might on the run. Really running his man. Now Blair's got to go to keep with him. He's being covered by Clemens as well, though. Three against one there for Walker, but he tried to nick it through there for Langley. Atkinson for Oldham. Holt. Almost dispossessed there by Fillery. some news on the radio from another game. Because everything is so tight at the top. So good news for Chelsea is either coming by way of Birmingham or by way of Cardiff where Sunderland are playing. But everybody here is keeping well in touch. And now it's with Atkinson. Stainrod. Well, it makes it all the more important if things are going Chelsea's way elsewhere that they make sure they go their way here as well. Koenichi for Oldham, though, with Chelsea leading 2-0. A lovely reverse ball played there by Koenichi for Holt. Turned nicely by Stainrod, but uh, no power there to Bola Perota. So the half-time score here. Congratulations on promotion, that may be very optimistic and premature yet, but certainly Chelsea are doing all that they have to do so far, with goals in the first half by Mike Fillery, a deflection from that free kick, and then by the number 10, Clive Walker. And it may be that a linesman was distracted a little bit by a fan who was talking to him, or trying to talk to him. There was a touch of offside about it, maybe there was, maybe there wasn't. What is absolutely sure is Chelsea then go in, leading comfortably at half-time. A lot still to come on the big match today. A half-time score here at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea 2, Oldham 0. We'll be back with the second half. Welcome back to Stamford Bridge. As Oldham Athletic now with the white shorts, attacking the goal to our right. Two goals down. Oldham having their, it's their last game, of course, for Ron Harris here. You can imagine thoughts that are going through his mind but it's the best uh, season that Oldham have had since they came back to Division 2 in 1974 Steele Peter and saved there uh, comfortably by the keeper squad of course one of them Greenwood's men also involved with Oldham Athletic Langley Walker's after it Troy is waiting in the middle now he wants a good high cross there it's not quite high enough it'll come to Troy's left foot only half blocked away there by McDonnell and neither Langley nor Fillery could get in there and Langley's down injured came in, it was aimed first of all at Mickey Troy's head, but in the end it deflected to his feet, and McDonald just about saved it, and Oldham got it away before two Chelsea men could pass. Clements, 
was his header. Flicked on again nicely there by the number 11 Atkinson, but it's Chelsea taking it up with Britain. Here's Walker. Got Troy up in support, he's attacking Ronnie Blair, still with Walker. A left foot shot into the side netting. Scorching run again there by Clive Walker. A shot that was just a yard or so wide. Steele turning that down nicely for Stainrod. And a chance now for the pole, Kominici. Steel on the far side, and a corner off Gary Chivers. players they must have known that things were happening in their favor somewhere else and what's going on here almost seems anticlimax by the reactions of the crowd from the news that's going on elsewhere but here we have Heaton for Oldham Stainrod and it might go anywhere in the end it comes here for Steele And uh, Stainrod jumping at an opponent there. And a free kick for Chelsea. Fillery for Britain. You can imagine how confusing it must be for the Chelsea players as well because they've no way of knowing what the news is that the crowd know. And of course, all they know is that they have to keep their noses in front here today, which they're doing very successfully with 3-0 the scoreline. And now with six minutes to go. Walker, it might fall for him. Hillary trying to last one in from way outside the penalty area. A goal kick to Alden. suspecting as we come near to the end of the game that there might be a pitch invasion from delighted Chelsea fans but at the moment it's Heaton making the running for Oldham playing it across there towards Steele trying to stab it in there for the Polish Kovanici but he completely missed his kick 
Well, he was annoyed with himself, and he's he had a really good game in the middle of the field, actually. He looks, uh, he looks a very good player indeed, but that was a terrible miss. The ball being played back nicely for him. And he completely miscued. Dry up there, nodded on once more towards Clive Walker. But David Holt putting it away for a Chelsea throw. Yeah, well into time, added on for injuries. And there goes the final whistle, it's 3-0 for Chelsea. Two by Clive Walker, one by Mike Fillery. As the crowd swarms onto this pitch. Well, they've had an afternoon where they've seen Chelsea win by three goals to nil. But, of course, so much depends on what's happened elsewhere. The celebration certainly would be premature. But it's the end of a season that promises an awful lot for Chelsea with manager Jeff Hurst and a young side that clearly intends to go places. So, two goals for Clive Walker, one for Mike Fillery, and with the crowd on the pitch at Stamford Bridge still not knowing whether next season will bring them second division or first division football, a final scoreline here that reads Chelsea 3, Oldham 0. So the Chelsea players had done their bit with that 3-0 win. And then it became an agonising wait for what had happened elsewhere. At Birmingham, where Notts County were the visitors, and at Cardiff, where the promotion candidates Sunderland were playing. And as so many of you write to say how you dislike being told in advance what the scores are, though how on earth you restrain yourself on a weekend like this, I'll never know. I'll respect your wishes. So Chelsea finished the season on a winning note. But there was a query, I thought, about two of their goals, and the real controversy came with a second goal. A spectator had come onto the touchline to speak with a linesman who'd just given the throw to Oldham when that spectator felt it was Chelsea's ball. I saw the linesman gesture him away once, but the spectator continued the dialogue and suddenly Chelsea were on the break. Was the linesman distracted? He told me afterwards he certainly was not. But was Clive Walker offside? Well, let's have a look as the ball's played forward there by Ian Britton. You can see Walker is clearly onside. What about the fellow on the far side? I think it's Tommy Langley, but the linesman clearly felt, and the referee also, but he wasn't seeking to gain an advantage there and wasn't interfering with play. But as the action here moves on, the blistering pace of his fellow Clive Walker and also the coolness in the way that he rounds Peter McDonnell in the goal there and gets his shot in quickly. Look at the ball boy there as well, pretty pleased with that Chelsea goal. The referee, Dennis Hedges, incidentally, and the linesman refused to comment afterwards about that incident except to say that they would have to report it, sadly, to the FA. Then the third goal, also by Clive Walker. Mickey Droy playing it forward this time. And I talk about Walker's pace. My word, he must have got going there to get clear of that last Oldham defender. And his timing must have been perfect for him to have been onside. But look at the linesman, perfectly placed on that far touchline, keeping his flag down. And again, a lovely piece of cool finishing by Clive Walker. The ball just lobbed into the back of the net. And again, look at the delight of the ball boys there. Well, it also meant a winning finale for Ron Harris. 20 years at the club. And afterwards, I asked him about his feelings now that he had played his last game for Chelsea after so long. Well, you know, to be truthful, I'm quite pleased that, you know, the game's over. And, uh, you know, this week, uh, I think I was a bit concerned whether the manager here was going to play me. And really? Me, you know, he told me on Friday that I would be playing. And, you know, I think we went out on the blaze of glory by winning 3-0. And yes. you say that Brentford won one nought, so I'm quite pleased. That's right, because you're going there as player coach next season. Yes, yes. How do you feel about that? Well, I'm looking forward to it, actually, because, uh, you know, I've been down here a long time. And, uh, <coughs> you know, over the years, uh, I've been looking, you know, to stay in football. And they've given me the opportunity at Brentford. And as I say, I know Fred Callaghan quite well. And uh, I'm looking forward to the challenge, like, you know. I'm interested that you should say, I'm glad the game's over. I mean, it was a bit of an emotional burden for you, I suppose, as well. Well, I've, you know, I've always had a, you know, tremendous respect for the crowd here. And they've always been tremendous, you know, towards me. And, you know, at the end of the game, when we went up to the director's box and they start chanting your name, uh, you know, I suppose it brings a bit of a you know, thing in your throat. So, you know. In fact, we had a picture of you there and then. I think there were a few tears in your eyes as well. Well, there? I was a bit, you know, a bit upset. But as I say, you uh, with a bit of luck, I just spoke to Jeff and he says that you know, I can go to Brentford on Monday, so as far as I'm concerned, this is what I'm looking forward to now. Starting work straight away yes, at the new yes. club, yes. I think there's a testimony on Tuesday, which uh, I think Brentford are playing, so I'm hoping to be selected there. Really? Oh, well done, getting straight down to it. When you look back on 20 years here, what, what are the great memories you've got, uh, Ron? Well, I think, you know, the things that stick out in my mind are, you know, the, the Cup final, 
for in 19 sevens, I believe, against Leeds, and the following season, you know, the trip to Athens, you know, when we beat, you know, when we beat Real Madrid, and they're the two most things that stay in my mind. Let's show you again then that uh, replay at Manchester United yes. when David Webb, of course, got That's that yeah. marvellous winner. And Gray to Giles. Gray now to Clark. Webb going in hard and Clark. Beautiful getting past him and past Cook. And now Mick Jones. McCready trying to go in. And a goal by Jones. Four leads. And now Osgood. Hutchinson. Cook. Chelsea showing a bit of style now. As Osgood goes in. A goal. And a beautiful long throw again there by Hutchinson. Jack Charlton, and it's there! And it's Webb for Chelsea! The managers you've played under here, who has particularly struck well, you? I think the two part? people uh, <coughs> that stick out in, you know, I think the, the two best managers I've served under was, first of all, Tommy Doherty, who I think got the club off the ground in 1962-63. I think he was a bit unfortunate that he never got the success you know, we kept on getting beat in semi-finals yes. and things like this. And then Dave Sexton came and done a tremendous job here for the club. And, uh, you know, he was very, very successful. And since then, there's been a few managers come and go. And, uh, That's right. But they're the two most, you know, the yeah. two managers that stand out in my mind. Ron Harris, and good luck to him then in his new job at Brentford. Coming up next, those two other games in the second division promotion scramble. Cardiff against Sunderland. And make sure you don't miss the thrills of Birmingham City against Notts County. We'll be back after this break. And welcome back. And for our second game today, we go down to South Wales for Cardiff City against Sunderland. Sunderland, who slipped up at the very last in recent seasons, came to this match with two games left and knowing that a win would see them promoted. That's how close it was. The pictures from HTV, the commentator Bob Simmons, Sunderland here in the stripes. Big kick by Turner, Pontin wins it, now Ronson for Cardiff. Pontin for Lewis, unable to control the ball though. That's Brown, turning Lewis, getting in his cross, and a chance for Collins and a good save by Grocher. Scrambled away by Cardiff. Campbell wins that one, Lewis, and Lewis again, but back again comes Sunderland, Kevin Arnott, loses the ball though, first chance of the game then, two Stan Cummings, as that ball from a mistake by Grapes, bobbled to him, he hit it well, but a good save by Grocher. Rod Thomas with a throw for Cardiff. That's back to Pontin. Ball holding up in this wind and a wild clearance by Pontin. Grapes though to the rescue. Ronson. Thomas moving intelligently into space. Beaten though. Now here's a chance again for Sutherland to break. This is Cummings. Still Cummings. And for the second time in a couple of minutes, it's Stan Cummings again, who gets into a goal-scoring position for Sunderland. Letting fly left-footed that time, but Roger had come out to narrow the angle. Who leaves it in turn for Whitworth. Down the line for Robson, marked by Harris, wearing 11, but playing at centre-back. And another corner to Sunderland. Cummings again going over to take it. Cummings has Hindmarsh and Brown on the near post to aim for. That's for Hindmarsh. But it's Moore who clears it for Cardiff. Sunderland's third corner now in as many minutes. Rob Hindmarsh, the centre back, up there at the near post. One of Sunderland's favourite moves to hit Hindmarsh at the near post. Quickly taken, Arnott. That's for Robson. Brown. Oh, what a chance for Sean Elliott. Badly in.
injured though in that collision with Gary Harris as he went to try and get in, try and get a shot in there. Gary Harris looks the more badly injured and Peter Grocher in the goal for Cardiff also hurt there. Well, that was certainly Sunderland's best chance yet, coming from the third corner of this game for Sunderland. Number of chances, Heimash getting in, Brown getting in, the ball finally coming out to Elliott, about 12 yards out, but hitting the ball wildly over the bar. And Elliott. Getting past it again, but getting the corner. First Kansas City corner of the second half, won by Mark Elliott, number seven. So Lewis with the corner. That's for Moore. Good save and a goal, yes, a goal by Moore. John Lewis's corner, coming over, well-struck corner from the far-hand side of the field. Ronnie Moore getting up very well, getting in his header. It looked for a moment as if Turner had scrambled it away, but in it went. Lewis. Getting Thomas into trouble, though. No foul. Six of one, half a dozen of the other, says the referee. Now Lewis for Cardiff. Infield to Campbell. He has Ronson with him and grapes overlapping, but the ball is a attempted long one to Elliott. Hennigan. Down the line for Cummins. That's inside to Dunn. A chance, Robson, he scored. Burry Dunn, the substitute, making that goal for Bob Robson. Chinking his way to the byline, getting a good cross to the far post. Bob Robson having the easiest of tasks to nod that ball in. Whitworth. In for Robson. But Harris there first. Unable, though, to prevent the corner. Barry Dunn moving over here to take it. Either he or Kevin Arnott will have it. As Grojo waits. Done with it. Robson. Just wired. Barry Dunn's corner headed on by Hindmarsh. Bob Robson trying one of his spectacular overhead efforts with the ball going just wired. So 1 1 was the final score, and it means that Sunderland have to get one point from their remaining game, which is at home to West Ham two days after the Cup final. If they get that point, and they've not been beaten at home this season, remember, then they will go up and Chelsea will stay in the second division. So what a night. That's going to be great tension. But now it's time for the last letter spot of the season, a real change of pace now. And someone who I think certainly deserves a mention is 17-year-old Tony Incenso of 31 Tarling Road, East Finchley, London, N2, who aims to be the youngest fan to visit all 92 league clubs, and so far, at the age of 17, has reached 65. On one Saturday last month, Tony left his London home to travel to the far west for Plymouth Argyle against Sheffield United, then by train for the night match between Torquay and Tranmere. And the only problem was that he had to leave Plymouth five minutes from the end of their game to get the train to Torquay, and so he missed Sheffield United's last-minute goal. In fact, the match finished in a 4-1 win for Plymouth. This is the action Tony saw, and the bit that he didn't. Well, this could be a real pile driver for Mike Trusson. He's scored a few lately. That's it! 1-0, and he really doesn't mess about in free kicks. Sims. Oh, that was clever. And that's it. What a lovely goal from John Sims. Not only does Johnson get the corner, but he takes it. Sims. That's it. Scored by Kemp. Very nice, too. So, 3 0. Trusson, Sims, and Kemp. Trusson takes that corner. That's it. That's number four. Scored by Kemp. The corner by uh, Trusson, 4 0. And Sheffield United have fallen apart. Rennick. 
Well, we've had a minute of injury time. Not sure why. There hasn't been one stoppage or one bit of time wasting in the second half, certainly. Jones. Good save, but it's in. Minute of injury time gone. The goal scored by Casey, and that's 4-1. Well, the end of the season is also quite a milestone for an amateur goalkeeper from this area. His name's Mike Brazier, who's just completed a thousand games for the Southern Amateur League Club, East Barnet Old Grammarians. A thousand games, imagine that. Starting 30 years ago as a 20-year-old goalkeeper wearing spectacles there, as you'll see. But sticking with the same club to this present-day lineup. Mike, in fact, has kept a record of every game he's played in and how many goals he's conceded as well. In fact, it's 1,773 in all. That's quite a bit of punishment by anyone's standards. But at least his club marked his 1,000th appearance with a silver salver. And in a special game, four of his sons, Chris Brazier, Gary Brazier, Mark Brazier, and Dean Brazier, were all in the opposition. That's a fantastic achievement. Congratulations to Mike. our last match today, as it happens, is also one of the best of the season. Birmingham City against Notts County, and Birmingham came to this match knowing that they needed just one point from their Midlands neighbours to be sure of promotion to the First Division. crowd of 33,000 at uh, St Andrews, waiting to celebrate, and the pictures are from ATV, with the commentator Hugh Johns, and Birmingham City, the team needing that one point, are in the plain dark shirts. Touch on by Dylan Gibbons in, and he got the touch, and a very brave header by Birchard. One nothing, Birmingham City. 18 minutes gone, a combination of a superb run by Gibbons, and a brave, brave header by Birchard. There's the way it started from that long kick out from Whelan's. And this run by Gibbons, almost to the line. Randy of Remerich came, didn't get the ball, but look at this for bravery by Birchin with the boots of Kilkline round his ears. I wonder if uh, Alan, uh, Alan Kirbishley might just try himself a, another bent free kick here. Well, he's placing the ball carefully. There's the wall. Abramovich dancing in the center of his goals, and he does try it, and he's there! Yes! Oh! What a beauty! Alan Kirbishley. Abramovich certainly didn't get his wall lined up properly. There it goes through the wall, into the corner, and Abramovich has got to blame his wall for that. I wonder what sort of free kick. It's an indirect free kick. Gemmel takes it. Knocked out by Stubbs. Comes down to Broadhurst. Might as well drive one. Uh, why not? Kevin Broadhurst. Always worth a go. This ball drops down to number two, Kevin Broadhurst eventually. Wasn't too much on for him. Has a look at the goals. Not on target, but always worth a go. And meanwhile, Notts County break away. There's Hunt. Oh, and that was a great try and a super little goal! from Gordon Mayer. Well, well, well. Absolutely out of nothing. Hunt's cross in here, more or less to the middle of the goals, and Mayer, the first man there. Whelan's didn't react quickly enough, and it's in the back of the net. Broadhurst again punting it forward. Well, Notts County defenders stop then. Oh, poor Ray O'Brien losing his, losing his feet. Ainsco aiming for Birchin. Ball back to Broadhurst. And he has trouble standing up. So Mayer locks that in. And Christie on a break here. One on one. Drives it. Good goal. A super goal for Trevor Christie. 2 2. Notts County again proving. They can't win at home, but they do pretty well away. Trevor Christie. Look at this left foot. Full of confidence, this goal scorer. Bang! Just wide of the fingers of Whelan's. Cut out. Kilkline hesitated a moment. O'Brien after Mayer. Cut out by Broadhurst. 
And this time the flag stays down and Birchin advances. Way far side, Gibbons giving him chase. Gemmel. Just to come down to Birchin, a touch off to Dillon. And 3-2 to Birmingham City. Kevin Dillon. And what a good time to get it. Dillon's eighth goal of the season and that brings the Birmingham fans back to their feet. Gibbons the cross in. Birchin picks out Dillon. He has a bit of work to do here, beating Richards, but picks his shot into the corner, right-hand corner, perfectly. Well, Brian Kilkline, big lad. We've seen a lot of him in Notts County sides in the future. And he made his debut back in October. And he's in this side to stay. Dillon's corner. Gimmel, off the line by O'Brien. Good cover. Well, that's what the fullback is there for. This is a good header by Archie Gamble. There's the cover. There's O'Brien. Christie getting it on. And Mayer picking up that ball from McCulloch. And Notts County coming in again. Good try. And Whelans gets up and angrily glares at his defenders. And young Gordon Mayer very nearly pulled something out there. The defence was badly stretched by Birmingham City. And the ball beats the far post. Christie, the touch. And Mayer in, and just robbed in time by Todd. Kirbishly off to Ainsco. Mayer. And Hooks breaking perfectly. Right in behind everybody. And drives a beauty! Oh! Well, I tell you what, that is the way to herald your appearance as a substitute. Oh, that's his first touch of the ball. Have a piece of that, he says. And what a save he brought out of Jeff Whelans. So the corner from Don Masson. Near post stops came across and tapped in. And it's 3-3 and it's Brian Kilkline who has scored the first goal of his life for Notts County. And it's 3-3 and Jeff Whelans is dumbfounded. Here's the corner. Stubbs got a touch there and the big lad Kilkline in to bury the ball at 3-3. That's Kirbishly. Ball out again. Well, as long as he's out of play. And time keeps ticking away. The referee wants the ball. And he blows the final whistle. And Birmingham City are back in the first division. And Jim Smith is one of the first men out there to grab Archie Gamble. And come off the park with him as the fans roar out. There goes Archie. There's Jim Smith, the manager. Jim Smith, who must have bitten his nails down to the bare fingers. And the Blues fans here keeping their roars going as more and more of this 33,000-plus crowd come roaring down onto the pitch. So Birmingham promoted. But coming up now, a promotion interview with a difference. To hear him, you would hardly have thought that the Birmingham manager, Jim Smith, was celebrating. Well, we're deflated and, uh, for one reason, because we are... Hopefully very professional. We're a bit disappointed the way we threw the game away today in terms of being 2-0 up and suddenly had to struggle for our lives to make it 3-0. And that's a good sign, really. I mean, uh, we, we wanted promotion for our lives. We wanted the championship for our lives. We, we've got promotion, but we also wanted to play well. And I, I don't know, it was an anti-climax, but I, I still think in the end of the day it was a good sign that everybody's a little bit sick that we could have done better. Do things the hard way, don't you? <laughs> well, I've done. I, I had visions of Fulham, as you remember, first game of the season, three 0 up, and lost four three. And today, two 0 up. I thought, here we go again, because it would make a great story for the television and papers, uh, messing it up on the first and the last day. But fortunately, we didn't mess it up today. Well, certainly they didn't mess it up, and the Birmingham City fans had plenty to celebrate, even if Jim didn't <laughs> seem to have. But I'm sure Chelsea fans are still reflecting that if only Notts County could have snatched just one more goal then Birmingham City would have stayed down and Chelsea would have been going up to the first division already. That's how close and cruel it has been. Indeed, the table shows that Leicester and Birmingham, two clubs already promoted, Chelsea in third place there. But, of course, if Sunderland, who've not lost at home uh, this season, if Sunderland get that one point against West Ham at Roker Park, then it's they who will fill the third promotion place and not Chelsea.
That then is the complete picture of the second division promotion battle. And that's it for this week. Thanks again for joining us. And the next football on ITV, let me remind you, is on Wednesday night at 10.30, the first European final of the season, the UEFA Cup final between the two German clubs, Borussia Mönchengladbach and Eintracht Frankfurt. That's 10.30 Wednesday night. And then we brace ourselves for that all-London FA Cup final next weekend between Arsenal and West Ham. With Hull win the Cup on Friday night at 10.30 when Brian Clough faces the fans from both sides. With our Cup final programme starting from Wembley at 11.15 on Saturday. And then on Sunday at 2.30, how the Cup was won. The post-mortems and the winners parade through the streets 2.30 next Sunday. And of course both West Ham and Arsenal have won at Wembley in the last five years. West Ham in 1975 against Fulham and Arsenal last year in that amazing finish against Manchester United. But still nil-nil, and maybe it'll be West Ham who do the taking as Holland takes it up now, down the left for them. Billy Jennings screaming for the ball, hitting it first time, Miller gets it, Taylor turns it back, yes, Alan Taylor! Holland. Oh, what a good ball by Holland there for Patton. And hit well by Patton, number two! And he's done it again! the scenes on the two benches well I never know the despair on the face of Don Howe and uh, Terry Neal but wait a moment it's there by Sunderland and they're back in the lead again and they're off the bench once more what an amazing cup final <laughs>